Vitality comfortably beat Astralis in the marquee matchup of the first day of the major. And what if I told you it was down to their ability to abuse Astralis's sight anchors that got them this win? I took a look back at all of the 14 rounds where Vitality tried to hit one of the bomb sites, and Astralis only got a kill from their sight anchor in two out of those 14 rounds. Yes, you heard that right. In the 14 rounds where Glaive or Zipex's bombsite was hit, they were only able to have impact in two of them. And that can be fine if you're stalling for time and rotations, but let me show you why that was not the case here. Let's start with this round, where Vitality are preparing a B play, but they're also doing a good job at making noise towards mid. And you can see Config, who is the short B player, has been distracted by all this utility and is currently focused on the mid position. That means Zipex needs to be extra aware of the fact that if he dies, the bomb site will likely be lost because Config is not in a position to help. And so after jump spotting, initially this smoke up to the apartments to stop the push seems like it makes sense. But when you switch to Masuta's POV, you can see he's been able to get so far up that he can very quickly pinpoint the fact that this smoke likely has been put into place because Zipex specifically wants to get up into the apartments himself. And once he figures that out, he can go ahead and sit in the smoke, wait for a flash, and boom, that's a blind Zipex, an easy kill onto the bomb site, and a really easy way to open up a round. Oh, and because Zipex dies so fast, Config can't get back into position in time. He's forced into this awkward engagement, and you just cannot afford to lose the B site that quickly at the pro level. It's similar in round 10, where Config is going aggressive up mid, leaving Zipex somewhat vulnerable at B. Config does a really good job at getting this kill, which leaves Vitality only with B control early in the round, so they decide to pull the trigger. Meanwhile, after the early molly and nade, Zipex throws that same smoke and tries to make the exact same play again. And even though he can dodge this first flashbang, the same second flashbang is thrown over the top to blind him and get this easy entry onto B. Again, from Masuta's POV, you can see just how easy this is because he knows the flash will be flying up to his left and that he definitely won't be blinded by it. So anyone in Zipex's position is going to be screwed. And this one is especially bad because Config has cleared out mid fully. All you need to do is make sure you can work with your teammates because you have Config and Blame F here to help you on B. But by fighting so aggressively like this, it makes it so much easier for Masuta to isolate these fights because the other players can't fully see deep into the apartments like this. If Zipex just sat back on the site, it will be so much easier to set up those crossfires with Blame F arriving on the rotate. But instead, Masuta can pretty easily just turn onto all these players. And yes, it is a very flashy triple kill. Shout outs to Masuta for that one. But still, it's made way too easy. Obviously, not all of these site holds were the anchor's fault. For example, this round, Zipex has a bloody USP. I'm not going to blame him for this one. It wasn't only Zipex struggling on B though. Glaive was also having his issues on A. And in this round, taking a look at the radar, you can see Glaive is completely alone on this A side of the map. So again, in this scenario, it is very important to survive more than anything and stall out your opponents. Even playing a 5v5 retake is potentially okay in this sort of position. But instead of playing a safe spot like in towards CT, Glaive is somewhat committed to the site. He does dodge this flash, but then just gets banged out by Masuta. Got to take a look at that shot again. And then look at the position this leaves Astralis in. Again, scrambling to get back into position. They've lost control towards A. Okay, the nades aren't there for Vitality yet, but still, this is not an ideal position to be in. Or you get something similar in the prior round, where yes, Astralis only have pistols. However, the way to win these rounds is to draw them out, make them scrappy, make them awkward for the T's. Instead, what happens here is Vitality just get gifted some early fights. This is not a fight Glaive is ever going to realistically win with a P250. Config tries to swing to help out. They both line up and it is now two easy entries out onto A and a pretty confident push coming through for Vitality because they know they've probably got this. Even if they're running into a stack at this point, 
they feel like they can just clean this up. Even looking at the pistol round where Zipex is playing over towards short, his molly unfortunately ends up being a little too slow to stop this push out through the apartments. But then he goes for what I think is a really low percentage play of trying to spam the smoke with the USP. If this was a rifle, I could understand it more. But with the USP, it's going to be so hard here in the pistol round to actually get a kill like this. And because he's spamming the smoke, Blame F in the meantime is forced to take a fight from the back of the bomb site. Zipex has to reload so he can't help his teammate out initially. And then the less said about this next sequence of events, the better. Seems like Zipex has been taking a few too many lessons from my demos because, oh... That is ugly. I do want to close this out by pointing out a couple of rounds that weren't the site anchor's fault, but they still couldn't have impact in because some of their teammates may have put them in poor positions. Here in this one, Astralis, or more specifically Config, controls mid early by just bodying his way through some of these fights to get this early 5v3 advantage. But then from here, Masuta lands some more brilliant shots. He was actually on fire this game. He had so many important kills. He gets this nice double to start to bring things back. And while this was happening, Apex made a really intelligent play of sneaking up into the connector smoke. So as soon as Masuta gets this second kill, he realizes that connector has been cleared out. The connector player has been picked and he has a potential timing window to himself being connector. And there's no way a CT would expect him to be so advanced like this considering their teammate just died in this exact position. So that is such a cool timing play made by Apex. And you see Glaive is completely clueless as to this possibility. And again, to reiterate, I don't think that's Glaive's fault at all. I think it comes down to his teammates at mid and a really heads up play from Apex. And since I've been a bit negative this video, here's a final bonus clip, which is a positive. Praise in my man, Apex. This was the play I mentioned earlier where he sneaks through the connector smoke. Really smart decision to catch Glaive in the side. Then look at this angle he takes into CT to catch the rotate of Farlig. If you watch this from Farlig's POV, again, you're going to see it is just not a common angle to pre-aim. So this ends up being a fairly easy frag thanks to the fast aim of Apex. And then it comes into the 1v1. Magus gets the early info that Zipex is coming in from CT. And instead of sitting back and playing the bomb, which is the expected thing to do in this scenario, Apex realizes with this early info, he can subvert expectations, play from the site box itself. And again, looking at Zipex's POV, he is basically looking everywhere except this box on the site. That is a beautifully played late round scenario and just out playing everyone with his brain. Gotta love that from Apex. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the quick turnaround on this one. If you did, subscribe. I got more content coming or check out this video that YouTube thinks you'll like or this video, which is my own special recommendation.